ye have all come to rejoice in it. You know, he didn't have to let us be here today, but it was all because of his goodness. And we have come today to give him the praise. Yeah. So let's lift up our voices as we begin our service and give God the praise. Jesus me stand for the reading of the word. Now upon the first day, we're going to be coming out of Luke 1 through 9 and then verse 11. Now Luke upon 24. the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there came up upon the serpica, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the spectacle, sepulcher, and they entered into and found not the body of the Lord. And it came to pass as they were very perplexed thereby. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Mm. Mm. He is not there, but he is risen. Remember, now he spanked upon you. He was yet in Gal Gal Galilee. Thank you. Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Mm. And they remembered this, his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things upon the 11th and to all the rest. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Amen. Amen. The word is blessed. I need the Now, my 
of your glory. Talk to him. In the earth, your handiwork. Talk to him. Lord, your servants come to you as humbly as we know how. Yes, yes sir. Lord. Yes, Lord. Being careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, we thank you on today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that you have touched us and allowed us to open our eyes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Giving the activity of our limbs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Allowing us to be clothed. Thank you. Thank you. And in the right mind. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Lord, we are just so thankful that we can just have one more time to be in the presence. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Thank that you. That we can thank enter you. into the house of the Lord one more time. Thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, we ask that you bless our pastor. Please, yes, sir. Lord. Please, sir. The angel Please. of this house. Please, yes. sir. That you continue to fill him with your Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, that his words are your words. Yes, yes sir. sir. And that his actions are your actions. Talk to him. Talk to him. You have placed us on a path of righteousness for your name's sake. Yes, sir. We are your people and we are called by your name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, we will not be ashamed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power unto salvation. Talk to him. Talk to him. And we are just so thankful, Lord. We thank, ask you, that you, thank you. Thank you. Touch those that have been hurting in their body. Please, sir. Please, sir. Heal their spirits. Hello. Heal their minds. Please, sir. Please, Lord. And bring them into remembrance that it is you that have eternal life. Yes, sir. It is you in which we trust in. Yes, sir. And when we shall fall, Lord, I know that you raise us up every time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, we give you the praise. Yes, all sir. We give you the honor. Yes, sir. And you have all the glory. Yes, all sir. All the glory, Lord. Thank you. Lord, go into the highways and the byways. Go please, into sir. the please, prisons, sir. Lord. Please, sir. Yes, please, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Let them know that it is still time to repent. Yes, yes, sir. It is still time for us to turn around and go the way that you would have us go. Yes, sir. We do not desire to walk against the wind. We do not desire to go against the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. but we ask that you fill us with power, give us boldness, and allow us to go out there and to shine your light Please, sir. into dark places. Please, sir. And we ask that you open a word and you prepare our hearts to receive it. Yes, sir. That you turn this dust, this soil, turn it over and make it ready to receive your seed. Yes, sir. And we ask for all to be blessed. Yes, sir. That's all of this in the mighty name of the author and the finisher of our faith, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let everyone say amen. 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 And amen. amen. I woke up this morning with my mind still on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind Stay on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my man. Stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Singing and praying with my man. Stay.
my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for lifting up your voices, praising the Lord with the deacon ministry. And we have just one thing to say to you. Not just have a blessed day, but have a blessed week. Let the Lord lead you. Trust in him. When our hearts and our minds, they may fail, but look to his word and he will direct your path. Keep him deep and close to your heart so that you will not sin against him. And your days will be blessed. Yes, your nights will be peaceful. Yes, sir. And your sleep will be good. Yes, sir. Because he has you. He will bring you into his fold, and you will dwell with the Lord forever and ever. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout out to God with a mighty voice of triumph. Come on, stand on your feet, and let's bless the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. We have came to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all. Come on, stand up and worship with us. You done for me. Oh, blessings and blessings and glory and honor and honor. They all belong. Belong. Hey, hey. Jesus for blessing me. For blessing me. Come on, we gonna say right there. Say, just wanna pray.
the sings and glory and glory and honor and honor they all belong they all belong to you the sings and glory and glory and honor and honor they all belong to you the sings and glory and glory and honor and honor they all bring these youth to us. Come on, Sister Lamaya. Y'all give Lamaya a hand. (laughs) Come on, put those hands together. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. And no matter what the doctors say, Jehovah has the final say. No matter what the bills may say, Jehovah has the final say. I have, I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. I, I have no reason to fear. I have, I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. Who? Who? And who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. No matter what the doctors say, Jehovah has the final say. No matter what the bills may say, Jehovah has the final say. I have have no reason to fear. To fear. The Lord is my light. 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 I have, I have no reason to fear. I have, I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. I, I have no reason to fear. I have, I have no reason to fear. No reason to fear. The Lord is my life. I have no reason 
I'm the Lord. The Lord is my light. Come on and clap those hands if you know that you have no reason to fear. Clap those hands. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Um, good morning, church. Um, I'm Dorothea, and I'll be um, opening us up with prayer. Uh, so please bow your heads and close your eyes. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you for waking us up. Help us to please open our, our hearts so we can accept your word in this sermon from the pe preacher. Please help us um, so we can understand your word and so we can respect you. Um, please like say what we need so we can accept you into our hearts help us to um help us to just honor you in everything we do help us to acknowledge you in everything we do and jesus name we pray amen good morning church y'all can do better than that good morning church on behalf of our pastor and true love i'll be welcoming our guests virtual and in person so if I call your name, may you please stand? We have Ronaldo Thorns. And we have Brenda Flemings. On behalf of True Love, we thank you for coming because we know there's any church you could have been to in the Valley. I just extend my blessings from our pastor. We thank you for coming. But I also have a card to read from our family members members it says in memory of our beloved beautiful mother mother Lafere, your expression of sympathy means more than you know thank you thanks to the true love family for being there for us in our own time of need forever grateful love patricia dorothea and family Amen. Praise God. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. I uh, want to thank God for again for our first time guests that are with us today. We welcome you to True Love Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you. Amen. Elder Thorns, God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. We had uh, gone to over the Tabernacle of Faith this morning, and uh, Elder Thorns was there. And then this past week, uh, he had a family member that we, uh, with uh, Reverend Michael Thorns, that we had to funeralize. Uh, and so we praise God for your presence today, sir. Our condolences to you and your family. Amen. Amen. Young man, preach that funeral <laughs> the other day. Oh, my God. What a tremendous gift to the body of Christ you are, sir. Amen. How many of you know that God is a provider? Amen. God is a provider. My sisters and brothers, that word provide means that God sees ahead. Amen. Amen. So he, he sees ahead. So that the, the ending part of vid is where we get the word video. So God sees, but pro means ahead. So he ahead sees. He ahead sees all of your needs. He ahead sees all of your wants. He ahead sees everything that you could ever hope to become in life. God is a provider. Amen. When, amen. Amen. When Abraham, when Abraham came to the land of Moriah and God had him to offer up his son, the Bible says that when he was right about to take the knife and to end his son's life, God uh, sent an angel and that angel gave a stay of execution, said, do not harm your son. And when he didn't harm his son, uh, the Bible says he looked up and he saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. And that place is where Abraham said, Jehovah Jireh, that in this place, God provided. Not only that, my sisters and brothers, but the land of Moriah is where Calvary is. Amen. So not only did God provide a substitute for Isaac, but God also provided a substitute for you and I in the personhood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God is always providing. He provides before you knew you had a need. God already made the provision. Amen. Amen. The Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. God gave before you knew you had a need. And I just need you to know to trust God in the, pre the presentation of your tithes and offerings. Trust God to continue to provide. Not only is God going to provide as you are making a contribution today, but isn't it good news to know that God never asks you to give without first giving to you? Oh, that's good news. Y'all, y'all miss y'all cue to shout. Way before, way before uh, God ever asked you to give him anything, God already made a provision. And God's not in need of our money. God is in need of our obedience. Amen. And God so desires to bless each and every one of us. So we're going to give you an opportunity to, to be blessed right now. Our ushers, uh, did our ushers pass through the aisles? I was talking. Y'all forgive me. Amen. Ushers are passing through the aisles right now with envelopes. For those of you that need an envelope at this time, amen. Just slip your hand in the air. Amen. They'll see your hand as you raise them throughout the sanctuary to give, provide you with an envelope today. Amen. There are four ways that you can make your contribution to True Love Missionary Baptist Church. First, you can do so by taking your offering and placing it in one of our offering boxes at the rear of our sanctuary once you get your envelopes. Amen. You can also go to our website at www.truelove mbclv.com and click on the give tab and just follow all the prompts. The third way is by going to our app at ministry one, find true love missionary Baptist church, follow the prompts and you can make your contribution at that time. Fourthly, those of you, especially those of you that are online, those of you that are part of our virtual sanctuary, if one of those ways did not work for you, amen, you can also take your offering and you can place that offering in an envelope and mail it to True Love Missionary Baptist Church, 1941 North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, amen, 89106. What a blessing it is to be able to give to God and to watch God do many miraculous things, many mighty things, amen, through our giving. 
Amen. Let's look to God in prayer. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to give a portion of what you've given to us back to you. God, we just praise you right now for what you're going to do with the gifts in the advancement of your kingdom here on earth. God, we're just praying right now in the name of Jesus that you'll pour a blessing out upon those who had a desire to give. Pour a blessing out, Lord God, upon those who had a desire but had nothing to contribute. Those who are able to give, Lord God, may you continue to bless them. Send them a blessing, Lord God, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And God, with the planting of this seed, Lord God, in good soil, we pray, Lord God, that you you will cancel poverty in all of our lives that will never be in lack, never be in want. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, at, that we don't even, we don't have to even ask you, Lord God, because God, you told us to ask, but we don't have to ask because that's the kind of God you are. That's the kind of father you are, one that provides for his children. For James said, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. Thank you, God, for being a giver. Now may we reflect, Lord God, our Heavenly Father, by giving back to you. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our praise thing. Praise God. Come on, clap your hands this morning. What we want y'all to do right now is put y'all hands together like this. It's just a little groove. Oh. You may remember this song. Y'all ready? Melodies, melodies from heaven. Rain down on me, rain down on me. Melodies from heaven, rain down on me, rain down on me. Take me, take me in your arms and hold me close. Rain down on me, rain down. Rain down on me, rain down on me. Let go. Melodies. Melodies from heaven. Rain down on me, rain down on me. Melodies from heaven. Rain down.
Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Melodies from heaven rain down on me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, let's give God praise for our praise team, our young people, amen. Sister Lamaya, amen. Blessed us this morning. Brother Arion, amen. We give God praise, glory, and honor for our young people today. Amen. For our junior nurses, amen. Sister Dorothea leading us in worship this morning. Come on, give God some more praise. Be encouraging, be encouraging. Today is Youth Empowerment Sunday. And so we praise God for our young people in the house today. Amen. Let's stand all around the church. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Lord, we need a word from you. Hallelujah. Lord, we need a word from you. 
Lord, we need a word from you. Lord, we need a word from you. Send it in its fullness. Send it in its fullness. Send it in its power. Send it in its power. Lord, we need a word. Lord, we need a word from you. Lord, anoint the preacher now. Lord, anoint your preacher to Lord, anoint your preacher now. Lord, anoint. Give your preacher power. Give me your preacher fullness. Give your preacher power. Lord, we need a word from you. Lord, anoint your hearers too. Lord, anoint. understanding. Give us the knowledge. Give us understanding. Lord, we need a word from you. Father God, I pray now in the name of Jesus. God, I'm so humbled, Lord God, to even be used by you. Lord God, to know that you've called me, Lord, during this moment to declare what thus saith the Lord. God, I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that, Lord God, you'll use me mightily today. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus that you'll speak to me, through me, and in spite of me. Lord God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord God, as you sit me down and let Jesus stand in my body, that you'll open the eyes and the ears of your people, that they will hear what thus saith the Lord unto the people of God this day. Father God, I pray in the, in the name of Jesus that you'll heal somebody through the word, that you'll deliver somebody through the word, that you'll save somebody today. May they come, Lord God, and cry out, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Father God, save somebody today. Lord God, somebody that thought, Lord, they were going to wait until they got themselves together. But Lord God, let them know today is the day of salvation. That Lord God, today is their moment. Today is their time. God, have your way. Have your way in the pulpit. Have your way in the pew. And we'll be ever mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, we need a word. Last time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we need a word. Lord, we need a word from you. Oh, Lord, we need a word from you. Send the fullness. Send it in its power. Sit in his power, Lord, we need a word from you. Hallelujah. A word comes to us today from the gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. We're going to look at verses 1 through 9, amen, and then verse 11. Luke 24, verses 1 through 9, and verse 11, amen. Amen. Of course, you're going to, uh, when you have an opportunity, go back and read all of the verses 1 through 12. We cut it down just a little bit. Amen. Just so we can get 10 verses in, 9 to 10 verses. Amen. Beginning at verse 1. Amen. 
Let us read in concert. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of men and be crucified and the third day rise again and they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the leaven and to all the rest and verse 11 and their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not amen amen Man, praise God. As you go to your seats, I want to use for a thought, I'm changing the game. I'm changing the game. Amen. My, my sisters and brothers, this morning, uh, as you know, on last Sunday, we were talking about how the month of March uh, had been named by uh, former President Jimmy Carter as Women's History Month. Amen. And so we want to continue that series, especially for today, because it is Youth Empowerment Sunday. And I especially, uh, under the, uh, the unction and the power of the Holy Spirit, I especially want to empower our young ladies that are in the building today. Our young sisters. Amen. I want to share just a few thoughts with you. The first of all, my sisters and brothers, I recently read an article entitled Black Girl Magic. Uh, Four Activists You Should Know by Kariya Muhammad Smith. Smith writes in her February 25th, 2020 article of four young black sisters who are impacting the world with activism. Uh, Smith writes of the first girl, her name is Mari Copany. Amen. She's 13 years of age. She's also known as Little Miss Flint. She's a young lady who's advocating for access to clean water ever since 2014 when it was discovered that the public water source in Flint, Michigan was contaminated with extreme amounts of lead poisoning. Miss Copany's mission is to ensure that no one ever forgets about Flint, Michigan. The second young lady that she writes about is Karis Rogers, then 13 years of age as well, a young proponent against bullying and the creator of the Twitter campaign, Flexin' In My Complexion. Miss Rogers first experienced bullying as a result of her skin color when she was only in the first grade. Miss Smith not only stands up for herself, but she stands for all young black girls. Amen. Uh, Miss Smith, not excuse me, Miss Smith, Miss Rogers. Miss Smith writes about Miss Rogers standing up for herself, but she stands for all young black girls, encouraging them to be comfortable and confident in the skin that they're in. The third young lady, her name is Naomi Wadler. And Naomi, my sisters and brothers, then 13 years of age, was a part of the gun violence activism. Ms. Waller came into public notoriety after delivering a heart-stirring speech in 2018 for the March for Our Lives event in Washington, D.C. Her mission is to bring young girls and young women of color into conversations against gun violence. Smith finally writes of Vanessa Natake, Nakate, excuse me, then 15 years of age, a climate justice advocate from Uganda. 
and founder of the Youth for Future Africa and the Rise Up Movement. Ms. Nakake's uh, mission is to arouse other African climate activists, especially among young women and young girls, to become a part of the international climate justice conversation and to also blend that, if you will, with conversations about the advancement of gender equality. Her passion, my sisters and brothers, for the inclusion of young people, young women, and young girls of color is also driven by the unfortunate prejudicial cropping of her image out of a picture where they had other young activists. They cropped her out. My sisters and brothers, each of these young sisters, Miss Copany, Miss Rogers, Miss Wadler, and Miss Nakate, uh, they're all making moves as young game changers. They have the courage to do what others don't. They have the courage to do what others are not doing. They have the courage to say on behalf of others what others will not say. To go where others will not go. And the boldness and the courage to stimulate and to challenge other young women of color to go do likewise. And that's my challenge to our young true love sisters this morning. Find your purpose and find your voice. Find your purpose and your voice and strive to let your lights so shine before all of humanity yes. that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I need for you to understand. Amen. All of creation awaits and longs for the revealing of the sons of God to change the game with the help of the Lord. And yes, I said sons of God, but that means daughters of God as well because we're talking about the children of the Most High God. I need to know today, do I have any game changers that are in the house today? Where are the daughters in the house that desire to change the game? Young daughters and older daughters. Where are God's sons in the house today who know that they are game changers as well? Who are determined to make a difference and an indelible mark that cannot be erased even as you change the game in your lifetime. Now don't fool me now. Do I really have some game changers in the house? I need to talk to you just for a few moments because our text, as we look at the context, the text is dealing with the resurrection. And I know this isn't Easter Sunday, but if you would just oblige me as I preach my little Easter speech this morning, amen. Amen. I just want to tell you a little something about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I need for you to understand here that the resurrection, my sisters and brothers, is a central fact and the sermonic theme in the history of the New Testament Christian church. The resurrection is is the foundation upon which we ourselves exist and which our testimony as believers depends upon. Luke reports that the women went to the tomb on the first day of the week and that they went there early in the morning. They bought spices and they were going to the tomb to anoint the Lord Jesus Christ. These women were there for Jesus from the crucifixion to the tomb while others, my sisters and brothers fled, they stood at the foot of the cross. While others fled, they saw the centurion checking the bodies on the cross. When others fled, they saw Joseph of Arimathea ask Pontius Pilate for the Lord's body. While others fled, they followed the Lord's body all the way to Joseph's borrowed tomb. While others fled, they bought spices on a Saturday evening so that they could come to anoint the Lord Jesus Christ early one Sunday morning. Oh, y'all miss y'all cue to shout. While others fled, they did their best to remain loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. On the first day of the week, that's Sunday, y'all, they came to anoint the Lord Jesus Christ. They came to anoint him because Joseph only had time to wash and wrap Jesus' body. Joseph did not have time to embalm the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The women came to finish the process proper burial rites. They came 
to anoint him. Because after the centurion checked their bodies and went by to break their legs of those who were crucified, those who were not dead yet, the washing and the wrapping of their bodies, the washing and wrapping of Jesus' body was all they had to do, all they had time to do because the Sabbath was approaching. Moreover, my sisters and brothers, devout Jewish women, as devout Jewish women, they made sure that they remembered the Sabbath day and kept it holy. And since my sisters and brothers, the Sabbath fell on sunset on Friday to Saturday, Sunday was just another work day for them. So they performed their daily duties before somebody else in the house woke up. <laughs> Glory to God. They performed their daily duties before they were asked to fix breakfast. They, they performed their daily duties, uh, their sisters and brothers, so before they performed those daily duties, before anybody got them, uh, got up to get ready for school or tune into the latest episode of Scroll Man, before they got up, my sisters and brothers, to read the Jerusalem Gazette, and before they even said good morning, to their husbands, these women rose early in the morning to go serve the Lord. And my sisters and brothers, since I've been getting up lately, before the break of dawn, before in the wee hours of the morning, there I need to tell you, I understand why these daughters went early in the morning to go and anoint the Lord Jesus Christ. I understand it because early in the morning, in the wee hours of the morning, there are no distractions. Uh huh, uh huh. They, they, there's no babies crying. Uh huh. That nobody's asking for breakfast. No telephones are ringing. No dogs are barking. No noisy neighbors partying to the break of dawn. Yes, there's nothing to disturb them and disturb their precious time with the Lord. That's what these game changers did. That's what the game changers did. Again, where are my game changers in the house today? If you're a game changer, you got to understand the first thing that I need you to understand about being a game changer is God moves stones for game changers. God, God moves stones for game changers. The sisters got up early in the morning and they came to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. Along the way, they wondered, they wondered, Mr. Minister Grant, uh, they, they wondered, uh, who's going to move the stone for us? That, that was in the back of their mind, Reverend Dixon. They were wondering, who's going to move the stone? But when they came to the tomb, they found the stone was already removed from the mouth of the tomb. And that goes to show you, my sisters and brothers, if you earnestly seek the Lord while he may be found, if you truly desire to serve the Lord, no stone will ever become an obstacle for you. Stones and other man-made barriers may be an obstacle for the Sunday morning spectator or, or, or someone who only stops by the church on, for holidays, funerals, and weddings. Uh, but, but it will not stop the seven-day-a-week, 24-hour-a-day, say, sanctified, spirit-filled, Savior-seeking servant of the Lord. The stone was rolled away. And they boldly entered into the tomb and found no body there. And I might as well tell you, the stone wasn't rolled away so that Jesus could come out. The stone was rolled away so that they could look in. Are y'all in the building with me? It was, it was rolled away so that they might see the miracle. How God raised up his only begotten son from a situation, from a posture where he was one time dead, but now lives again. Are y'all in the building with me? Now, now, had Jesus' body still been there, my sisters and brothers, uh, uh, that, that would have made everything that we're doing here today a farce. It would be totally useless. But the good news is, my sisters and brothers, Jesus' body was not there. That's the good news because what it tells us is that God keeps his promises. I don't know what you've been praying for. I don't know what you've been seeking from God. But I need you to understand that God keeps his promises. Hallelujah. 
had the body still been there, my sisters and brothers, he would, after Jesus had declared that he would destroy the temple and in three days raise it up, it would be a mockery. Had the body still been there, there'd be no reason for us to come to this place we call church. Had the body still been there, there'd be no reason for us to assemble in the house of worship Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Had the body still been there, we would have been faced with only the mortality of our souls. Had the body still been there, then all of our preaching, all of our preaching, all of our faith, all of our prayers, it would all be in vain. But I'm glad to report my sisters and my brothers. Uh, I'm glad to report uh, to those of you who do not believe, to those of you who did not know the Lord and the pardoning of your sins, the Lord was resurrected and in bodily form. That's why there was no body in that tomb. And even though I was not there, I know that deep down in my knower, <laughs> I wasn't there, you weren't there, but I know deep down in my knower that every time I sing the song, because he lives, glory be to God, something gets stirred up on the inside and it pushes me through all of my trials and tribulations because he lives. Though I'm my sister and brother, it pushes me through every lack and all of my wants. Because he lives, it makes no difference about despair and disappointment. I can face tomorrow and I can face tomorrow's tomorrow because I can face whatever comes my way because Jesus... He lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. And that's why the stone was rolled away. But not only that, uh, that, that was the first thing. But I need to understand. Secondly, two and we through. Two and we through. God revives the hope of game changers. Uh huh. If you are a game changer, every now and then you're going to go through some moments where you feel a little despair and a little distraction and, and, and you're going to feel a little depression. But I need for you to understand that God revives the hope of game changers. It's in the text. The stone was rolled away and when the women went inside the tomb, the body was not there. Uh -huh. when, when the two angels appeared, sisters and the brothers, before them wearing shining garments, the record shows that the women were afraid, fell to their knees, and bowed their faces down to the ground. Are y'all in the book with me? The women were afraid because they thought someone had come and stolen the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. But then one of the angels spoke to the women and he says, why do you seek the living among the dead? Are y'all in the building with me? Uh-huh, uh-huh. They, they, they must have had, they must have had uh, Deacon Percy, uh, Sutton, Deacon and Train, Sutton, they must have had spiritual amnesia. Glory to God. That be, because my sister and brother, they had forgotten what the Lord had said to them and the other disciples as he was handed over into the hands of sinful wicked men that he was to be crucified and on the third day resurrected from the dead. Can I tell you sisters and brothers that it was almost as though when the angels asked them why do you seek the living among the dead it was almost as though they were saying you should have known better. You, you, you should have known better. And I'm afraid, my friends, that the angels are speaking to us as well today. We too should know better than to seek life in dead places. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let, let, let me see if I can chew that up for you. Let me chew that up and give it back to you. Doing the same old things, expecting new things to happen out of the same old things. That's seeking life in a dead place. Holding back on your dreams and your goals, thinking that later will be a better time to pursue your, game, your goals and your dreams, that's seeking life in a dead place. If the recent reports of people that you know who have died has got you down and making you feel hopeless, my sisters and brothers, you may not be just in a dead place, but you may be stuck in a dead place. But God sent me by 1941. North 8th Street to tell somebody child of God stop all of that. The word of God tells us that God is the God of the living and not 
of the dead. The Lord wants you to live your life to the fullest. God wants to restore your hope this morning, my sisters and brothers, so that you'll live life to the fullest and not seek life in dead places. There's no benefit in ever saying to yourself, if I could have, should have, would have. Mm -hmm. There's no pleasure when you're looking at one, your, your present situation and you're wishing you could change things and go back to the past. Are y'all in the building? My friends, life is a God-given gift, and God has given us but so much time to live our lives in. The life that we live on this side of glory is short. And we do ourselves a great disservice by living it out by seeking life in a dead place. While you yet have breath in your body and blood flowing warmly in your veins, you have the capacity to change the game. The resurrection is your hope that you can be a game changer and that God will change the game for you. Are y'all in the building? That's why David said, David said, what profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall, I, shall it declare thy truth? Can we talk for a moment? I, oh, glory to God. Help me to say this right, Holy Ghost. As good as heaven is promised to be. As excited, as exciting as the praise parties in heaven are going to be. As beautiful, my sisters and brothers, as eternal life is going to be. Are y'all with me? My sisters and brothers, the grave can wait for me. You and I can't serve God from a grave. My sisters and brothers, although my goal is to live so I can live again, the grave can wait. Am I among friends today? Do I have a witness in the house today? Walking the streets paved with gold, that can wait. That can all wait because there is so much to live for in the right now, in the here and now. You can live for God. You can make witnesses for God. You can see souls saved for God. There's so much to live for right now. And trust my sisters and brothers, right now you are receiving God's good news sanctioned by God to restore and revive your hope, to resuscitate your life and to reach in and pull you up and out of a dead place and here's where you can hang your hope on today my sisters and brothers because today's headline reads he's risen Christ Jesus yet lives today he lives he lives he lives Finally, my sisters and brothers, finally, my sisters and brothers, those of you that are game changers, those of you that are changing the game in your life, you've got to understand that God gives game changers testimonies that impact the world. He gives us testimonies that impact the world. The, the angels had to jog their memories. Mm-hmm. Uh, had to remind them how Jesus spoke to them while he was in Galilee. How Jesus said that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful and men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. These women then remembered his words and they returned from the tomb and reported all the things that they had seen and heard to the eleven and to all the rest. These game-changing women. That's verse 10. Y'all see the book? Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women who were there. Women's History Month, we, we recognize the sisters, amen. There were women that were there while everybody else fled. The women returned and they told the disciples what they had seen and what they had experienced, what they heard. And their words, the Bible says, their words seemed to them as idle Tales, mm. in in the Greek, though in in the Greek, y'all y'all, this is something I rarely do unless I have to. But in the Greek, understand that from the Greek origin, 
idle words, it refers to, the, it, it means that it seemed like silly nonsense to the apostles. How is it that Jesus can be alive? How is it that the tomb is empty? They thought it was idle tales. But that's not all that idle tales refers to. Idle tales, uh, from the, a medical standpoint, it means delirium. Y'all still here? A a amen, Reverend Dixon. So, so they thought when these women came and told them this story, they were crazy. Are you still in the building with me? Amen, Deacon Nichols. And they thought they had lost their ever-loving mind. Uh-huh. That the women seem to have disturbed states of mind. But isn't that how it is? When you share your testimony with non-believers, don't they think you delirious? Isn't that how it is at times when you share your testimony about the goodness of the Lord and all that God has done for you? Isn't that how it is when you tell people about how God blessed you with a car and a house and they're thinking, no, that was the job that you had and because you worked so many hours, but it was God that blessed me with the job and God that blessed me to have the energy to work all of the hours that I'm working. Isn't that how it is, sisters and brothers, when you share your testimony about everything that God has done in your life, when you say, this joy I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Isn't that the way it seems when those who don't go to church or don't know the Lord in the pardoning of their sins, they look at you like you delirious. But don't let them silence you let them think what they want because my sisters and the brothers they don't know who you and I know <laughs> no they don't know him yeah, let, let them think that you out your mind those outside of the fellowship of the saints will accuse you of being fanatical when you tell them about how good God has been to you. But yet and still, if you keep testifying and lifting up the name of the Lord sooner or later, because Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Sooner or later, they'll make an inquiry of you and you and you. And you, what must I do to be saved? Oh, y'all don't hear me up in here. My sisters and brothers, my sisters and brothers, glory be to God. God will use your testimony to impact the world. Yes, he will. As a little boy, I remember riding in the back seat with my cousins and my siblings. And we'd ride around town with my grandmother, late Bishop Emma Yates. And, and, and grandma, uh, she, she said that uh, ain't nothing too uh, good for Emma. Amen. And, and so Emma Yates had a Cadillac. And Emma Yates would pay cash for the Cadillac and, and it'd be sitting on the, on the showroom floor waiting for her to pick it up when the, ch when the car came in after she ordered it. That, that's how Emma Yates had it. Amen. And, and, and I remember riding in the back seat of her Cadillac and, and one day, just my sister and brother, she started crying out, thank you, Jesus. Mm. So what seemed to us no good reason? We're sitting in the back seat. We riding. Grandma's driving fast. Cadillac going like this. All of a sudden she said, thank you, Jesus. My sisters and my brothers, her exclamations and her praises, they startled us. And sometimes we'd sit in the back seat and we'd start giggling. Because we thought grandma was delirious. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But then one day, just like grandma said, and just like the seasoned saints have told us, keep on living, baby. And you'll be shouting like I'm shouting. Keep on living. And you'll become a living witness as well. 
Can I tell on myself? Uh, my sisters and brothers, we thought grandma was delirious. But can I tell you something? Every now and then, in the privacy of my own car, every now and then, in the quietness of my study, every now and then, in the sanctity of my shower, every now and then, when I'm strolling through Walmart, every now and then, when I'm working out at LVAC, every now and then, with my eyes open, and I behold another day, Grandma was right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every now and then, there's a glory to God that's welling up on the inside. And something on the inside is working on the outside. Oh, what a change. <laughs> Oh, what a change in my life. Every now and then. Is there anybody here that every now and then, hallelujah, every now and then, when you think about the goodness of the Lord and all, all, all he's done for you, your soul, your sanctified soul cries out, hallelujah. Why? Because he's a game changer, and he changed the game for you. One day you were sinking deep down in sin, and Jesus reached down. Does anybody here understand that he'll reach way down to pick you up? He's a game changer, and because he's a game changer, he's made you a game changer. Is there anybody here today? That's got to thank you, Jesus. A hallelujah. A glory be to God. Is there anybody here that'll shout glory unto the Lord? And that's my encouragement today. Not only for you, you and you, but especially for the young sisters in the house. There ain't nothing wrong with praising the Lord. Uh, glory be to God. Those disciples thought them women were crazy. But the Bible says that Peter got up and he ran toward the tomb. And he had to check it out for himself. And my sisters and brothers, he went home rejoicing and marveling by what he had seen. Your testimony will change the game for the people that are in the world. Don't think that it's the job of the preacher to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just for the evangelism team, but Lottie, Dottie, and everybody under the sound of my voice, you ought to be able to tell somebody, look and see what the Lord has done. You just don't know how good God's been to me. You just don't know how God looked beyond my faults and supplied my needs. You just don't know what Jesus has done for me. He saved my soul. He made me whole. He put joy on the inside. Glory be to God. He's a game changer. And because he changed the game, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. So that he'll change the game for you as well. He'll use your testimony. He'll use your testimony to impact the world. Young people, when you're online, he'll use your testimony to impact the world. Young at heart, for those of you that are online, tell somebody about Jesus. Your testimony will impact the world. I don't know. But I need you to understand that every baptized believer has the potential and the call to be a game changer. Tell somebody about Jesus. When you get into a, into a moment, and, and remember those moments when you feel depressed and you feel like throwing in the towel. Remember, he'll revive you because... If, if resurrection power was good enough to raise up Jesus, do you know what it'll do for you? Have you ever been in the dumps, down in the dumps? 
You've been lower than a duck's footprint. <laughs> you were so, you, you were, hey, glory to God. Hey, 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 hey. I'm about to tell on myself. The blues singer said, Deacon Boyce, uh, I've been down so long, getting up ain't even on my mind. Has anybody ever been there? Resurrection power will raise you up. It'll raise you up. He's a game changer. Yes, he is. Let's stand all around the church. I don't know where you are, but I feel your presence in the house today. You don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins. You don't know him as savior of your life. Amen. All of this shouting that we're doing, all this preaching and treaching I've been doing, is because he's sweet, I know. I know. I want to introduce you today to my Savior, who wants to be your Savior. He's not just my Savior, because the Bible says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but they shall have everlasting life. Now that's a promise for the world, but not everybody accepts that promise. But you can accept it today. And my Savior Jesus will become your Savior Jesus. Hello somebody. Won't you receive him today? Paul writes in Romans 10 and 9, he says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Is there one today? Is there one today? If you're afraid to walk by yourself, amen. Just slip your hand in the air. We got ministers and deacons throughout this church. We got members that are on your pew. Amen. Just let them know. Say, hey, 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 would you walk with me? Amen. And if you want, if you want to keep it, if you want to keep it down low, just whisper. Say, tap them, tap, tap. Hey, I'm not trying to disturb you. But would you walk with me today? I feel the Lord calling me today. And it's so very important that I answer this, but, but I'm a little shy. Maybe that's not your call. Maybe your call is that you need to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to invite you to come today as well. Come to Jesus just the way you are. And let me tell you something. Because he loves you, he won't leave you where he found you. He's not going to leave you in that condition. Is there, another today? Is there one today? Amen. Amen. Well, preacher, I'm saved. Preacher, I don't need to rededicate my life, but I don't have a home church. I want to extend this invitation to you as well today. We want to be your church family. I want to be your pastor. We want to pray with you. We want to love on you. We want to grow with you. Is there one today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Seeing that there are none, true love, give God some praise. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Jesus, like the fragrance, oh, after the Yeah, Jesus, call him Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim, oh, that King anyone needs prayer, they shall come, come right down for prayer. Pass away. There is something prayer changes things. About that name. Oh, we call you Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Oh, Jesus, there is 
something about that new Amen. Let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. I'm going to pray with the sister's body. She's asking for healing. Lord God, Lord, we come to you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. In this moment, in this time, God, we're asking God for you, Lord, to touch the sister's body right now in the name of Jesus, God. Father, your word says, Lord, that you died and you rose, and in three days you got it with all power in your hands. I ask in the name of Jesus, Father, that you stretch that power right now on the sister's body, God, and you begin to move in and through her body like never before, Father. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, you begin to move through every ligament in our body, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Every single muscle, Father, that she's having trouble, tr trouble with, Father, I ask, Father, that you begin, to, Lord, to move. And in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, Lord, that her mind, Father, be stead on you. Give her a peace that surpasses all understanding in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray, Lord, that she be healed under the sound of the voice, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, that the healing is taking place even right now, God. Father, do it, Father, like never before, God. Begin to touch your mind, Father. Begin to touch your heart, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. And we thank you, Father, that the healing is taking place, God. The chains are being broken over our body right now in the name of Jesus, God. And we thank you for freedom, Father. Freedom in you, God. Lord, we thank you. We praise you and we glorify you. Bless the sister right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask, Jesus. Lord, that you touch your man of God in the name of Jesus, God. Jesus. Whatever area, Father, that he's dealing with, Father, we don't know, Father, but you are the all-knowing God. And we know, Lord, that you have the power to heal. You have the power to set free and deliver. So, Father, right now, Father, in the area of need, Father, I pray, Lord, that you meet it right now in the name of Jesus, God. The Lord, you begin to look beyond every single one of his faults, and you begin to meet the need right now under the sound of the voice, God. Lord, touch him right now, Father, in the area, God. Lord, we know, Lord, that you hear the prayers of the righteous, for the prayers of the righteous avail of much. And, Lord, we know, Lord, that you still are the living God. Begin to do the healing in this atmosphere, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. Begin to heal his mind, his heart. Begin to heal every single area of needs right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, just, just begin to destroy the yokes, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Whatever he has been carrying, we ask for releasement in the name of Jesus, Father. There's power in the name of Jesus, God. And we thank you for your power. Do the cleansing right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I feel it flowing out of his body right now in the name of Jesus, God. Flow out, God. He's free. He's free. And we thank you right now, Father, for meeting this need in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask, Lord, that you touch the three that are sitting here right now in the name of Jesus, Father. They came here, they stepped out in faith for prayer, God, because, Lord, they need you, Father, to meet that need, Father, that they have been dealing with, Father, for this whole week, God. And, Lord, they have come into the house of worship, Father, to be healed, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, touch right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Touch him, Father, right now, Father, wherever they stand in the need of, God. Lord, you begin, Lord, to do the healing in their lives, God, in the name of Jesus, God. You begin to touch that area of need, Father, that they have been dealing with, God. Pray for their hearts, their minds, Father. I pray, Lord, for their souls. Whatever they're dealing with, Father, we thank you, Father, that they're, they're not going to have sleepless nights anymore, God. They're not going to leave this place, Father, like they came in, God. But right now, in the name of Jesus, God, meet the need. Meet the need. Touch them right now, Father. Shift them right now in the name of Jesus, God. Father, they are your children, Father. They will live and they will not die. In the name of Jesus, God. We pray for life and we pray for life more abundantly, Father. In the name of Jesus, God. And Lord, we pray for cleansing. Cleanse them, Father, from the inside out. And fill them with your Holy Spirit, Father. We praise you, Father, for each and every one of them. In the name of Jesus. We pray, amen. 
call him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let our heaven and earth. And these are your weekly announcements. Hey, family. Our speaking engagements for the month of March will be at Mount Jamison Baptist Church. They will be celebrating their 27th church anniversary. This will take place Friday, March 24th at 7 p.m. And the address is 825 East Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. See you there. Because We Matter will be sponsoring a paint and praise night on March 25th here from 3 to 5 here in the Reverend I.W. Wilson Fellowship. There are only 25 slots available. If you would like to sign up, please sign up in the lobby following service or sign up through the Ministry One app. True Love Youth and Young Adult Ministry presents Live for Christ Skate Day. The day will take place Saturday, April 1st, 2023 from 12 to 3 p.m. The address is Crystal Palace Skating Center, 3901 North Rancho Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89130. Set up with the youth leader today to make sure your spot is secured. To request a copy of your financial statement, please complete the financial statement request form and place it in the offering bins. When completing your form, please be sure to print clearly. True love, we thank you for your faithful and generous giving. Because of your giving, we as a church are able to carry out the vision and work of true love. When you request, please be sure to state your name, address, phone number, email, and how you would like to receive your document in either mail, in person, or email. True love, we are now searching for a new church secretary. If you would like to join the position of being our church secretary, please submit your resume at admin at truelovenbclv.com. Hey, True Love family. We are seeking volunteers to serve in the media ministry. If you are interested in serving in the media ministry, please complete a connection card and place it in the offering basket. Live for Christ Youth Bible Study is back. You please join us every Monday at 7 p.m. via Zoom for our weekly Bible study. To get the Zoom information, get in touch with the youth leader or download the Ministry One app where the information will be posted. True Love needs you. If you would like to get connected and serve within a ministry, please complete a ministry connection card and place it in the offering basket. Ministry connection cards are located in the front vestibule. To stay connected with what's happening here at True Love, download our mobile app by downloading the Ministry One app and searching for True Love. This will give you access to all announcements, events, past sermons, and so much more. You can also follow us on our website at www.truelovenbcld.com and follow our other social media platforms. Family, as always, let's continue to keep our sick and shaved and bereavement families in our prayers. Something to encourage you for the week. You got to faith it until you make it. Thank you for worshiping with us. Have a blessed week and remember to love out loud. Amen. Praise God. Let's give God praise one more time. Amen. Well, first of all, my sisters and brothers, I want to thank God for, amen. You can bring me down just a little bit. Amen. Uh, thank God for uh, those who were able to support this morning over at Tabernacle of Faith. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. There is the sixth anniversary for Pastor Frederick and Sister, and, and for Pastors Frederick and Jenny Johnson, the pastors of Tabernacle of Faith. Uh, we had a glorious time there. Uh, towards true love. I, I know we had to step out and leave today so that we could be here. Praise God. But thank you for your presence, for your hollas and your hallelujahs. Amen. Amen. As we were helping them to celebrate their sixth 
pastoral anniversary. True Love, please, again, it's already been in our announcements. Please uh, remember to come out Friday night to Mount Jameson uh, at 7 o'clock for their church anniversary. Uh, the preachers, uh, deacons, choir, uh, choir, ushers, and whole congregation, those of you that are able to come. I know it's a, it's a small building, amen, but uh, as many of you as that can come, please come so that we can come and show them our support and our love, amen. A Brotherhood Breakfast on Saturday here at True Love at 8 a.m. And then men's choir rehearsal will be at 1 o'clock p.m. Want to encourage the brothers, brothers in the house, brothers say, hey. Come on, brothers, come on now. Hey. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We want to encourage you to come and be a part of our brotherhood breakfast. And if you can, and please stick around or come back. Amen. Come back for one o'clock for our men's choir rehearsal. Uh, there have been many persons who have asked about the men's choir. We, we have the men's choir and, and Brother Mac Banks is ready to, to lead us and to teach us songs and so forth. So we need the men to show up. Amen. Amen. We have three that have been faithful, amen, to our men's choir. We want to come and we want to add numbers. So those of you that come up when, when Brother Banks invites everybody to come up at the end of, uh, on Men's Sunday and everybody fills up the front of this altar, amen. Well, we can fill up this choir box too, amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And if y'all come out, I may even sing with y'all. <laughs> Amen. I might sing with you, but please come one o'clock on Saturday. Uh, that will conclude. Actually, one thing. Uh, we, we do have positions. We have ministry opportunities for you. Uh, we need some persons that desire to be a part of our media ministry team. Also, our secretary position is coming open. We want to thank God for Sister Sharkia Grant. God bless you for everything that you've done. In helping us to get started over this past year, we are, uh, Sister Kia is about to uh, embark upon an educational journey. She's got some things that God is about to do in her life. And so that position will be opening up as soon as we are able to fill it. Uh, we will uh, then uh, release Sister Kia. Amen. She's agreed to stay on with us uh, at least that long. So again, thank you. God bless you for everything that you've done and that you've added to our ministry and we just wish you God's speed in the endeavors that you are now pursuing. Well, my sisters and brothers, we come to that time for up oh, glory to God. Brother Kevin Hansbro, please come forward. Amen. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. He tall. <laughs> God bless you. Bless you. Praise God. Brother Hansro, you have completed your new members class, and we are so grateful to God for you, sir. Amen. And we want to uh, present you with this certificate of membership. Amen. And this is a token of our love and our affection for you. Amen. If you would free up one hand, the deacons and our ministers are going to come through and give you the right hand of fellowship. Divine leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how Amen. One more, one more. Praise God. God bless you, Brother Hansbro. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
It's been a blessing, amen, for us to worship together today. It's time for us to come down from this place, amen. So let us stand all around the church, amen. I'm not going to go to the back. The ushers have let me know that it's windy out there, and so I'm not going to go and, and cold, and you cold. Are Praise God. The source, You're the source of, of my, my strength. strength. You are the strength of my life. And you are the strength of my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lift my hands in total praise. Oh, I do to you. God, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen and all that our ears have heard. We thank you, Lord God, for dwelling among us this day, Lord God. For, Lord God, we know that you love to inhabit the praises of your people. Thank you, Lord God, for your divine visitation. Thank you, Lord God, that we felt your presence today. Surely the presence of the Lord has been in this place. And Lord God, we're not going to leave it here. Lord God, we've heard of Vegas. What happens here stays here. But we're taking it with us. We're taking the joy with us. We're taking the happiness with us. We're taking the love with us. We're taking the word with us. For Lord God, we thank you for everything you've deposited in us today. Bless, our, bless every person under the sound of my voice. Where they came to the altar for prayer, not God, each one of your children, Lord God. There's a prayer, there's a request that they have for you, and you know what they need even before it parts their lips. Supply their needs, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we'll give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Now, Lord God, as we leave this place, as we leave, Lord God, empowered to be gang changers. Let us go and tell the whole world that we've got a Savior. And he's sweet, I know. We pray it all now in the name of Jesus Christ and for his name's sake. And the people of God said amen and amen. Amen. Go to you.